We're going to get a welder and we're gonna weld it. If not, we're gonna get Zach's part. In the last video, we showed you how to break a Cherokee Trailhawk. And in this one, we show you how to get it recovered, what actually broke, what we now carry, and how much this recovery cost us. So let's get right into it. Oh, this is where we ran into those people almost, yeah, isn't it? they're all in that line. <laughs> so we are picking up immediately from day one of our failed red cone trail guide where we showed you exactly how this Cherokee broke. Now here we will show you a off-road recovery from the perspective of the rescuees. So you know exactly what to do if you need someone like Matt to come recover your vehicle. Wait. This is really <laughs> This is the third time I've started Red Cone this day and we are returning to get photos and GPS coordinates as we have determined that we need help. Our original plan of a self recovery using a welder or Zach's tie rod part, which was last seen on our tin cup recovery video, just wasn't feasible for a quick recovery here. And we definitely needed a quick recovery as we were blocking this very popular trail. Alright, there's my Google pen. Another reason we needed a quick recovery is as of late we have been dealing with thieves stealing parts or just vandalization of broken vehicles on our Colorado trails. Thankfully Colorado 4x4 Rescue and Recovery was able to quickly dispatch a team to get this Cherokee Trailhawk recovered. I'm going to pick up on day 2 where I'm going to show you what they did for us as well as how much this cost us. Well, why Sean does this and we are now on day two of the recovery of this Cherokee. Now, I know some of you guys are going to be like, why is a Cherokee on Red Cone? This Cherokee does everything. If I had the same thing that happened to Sean with two KO2s, good brand tire, all terrains that popped on me, I would be out of luck also just like him. Now, the biggest issue is if you look at this trail, there is no spaces for him. That's why we came back last night. We were looking for a space that we could get this Cherokee off trail. A bypass was created and we absolutely hate seeing this as our trails aren't as durable as trails in other areas may be. This is our fault and I take responsibility for sending Sean down. I just thought he'd make it and I never imagined he would get stuck in a spot that wasn't wide enough to pass. This has definitely been a learning experience for us and although embarrassing to show, I hope our mistakes will help you not experience them for yourself. Thankfully, when we came back in 2021 and shot the full trail guide, which I'm showing you a preview of now, I didn't notice the bypass. So hopefully this means the trail is recovering, but we need to do better ourselves. So how are we going to prevent this in the first place? Well, first we have purchased a sidewall repair kit, which is different from a tire repair kit, which we were already carrying. Hopefully this kit will work better than the tape. Sean has also made the financially irresponsible move and got rid of his KO2s and put on KM3s. Now no tire is immune but hopefully using a beefier tire will prevent the two sidewall tears that led to this breakdown. Additionally Sean has learned how to replace tie rods in the field and that's something I hope to learn as I'm going to be wheeling an IFS vehicle more in 2022. So we made a call to Colorado 4x4 Rescue and Recovery. They are an all-volunteer 501c3 nonprofit organization with specialized training to recover vehicles from 4x4 trails. Two of these guys from Colorado 4x4 Rescue and Recovery were absolutely awesome. However, one of them, well, he refused to let me film because he did not want to wear a high-vis vest. Now I try to be respectful of people's filming wishes, but this would have been great to see as these guys really know what they're doing plus it would give us insights onto what to do if we're in a similar situation 
Although I didn't get it on film, they fixed Sean's tie rod with a commercial tie rod sleeve similar to the one that Zach made to recover the Renegade from Tin Cup. Now what I'm going to do to show you how that works is I'm going to recut that Tin Cup recovery and I'm going to show you how a tie rod sleeve works and it will also give you an opportunity to see Zach's genius. He's wheeling on his own! Oh, it's not good though. All right, now I did check with Justin King, a fellow Colorado YouTuber who happens to be on the Colorado 4x4 Rescue and Recovery Board, as well as the people that matter, the other two guys that actually helped us get this Cherokee off Red Cone. They all said filming is allowed, and since two of the three recovery crew actually wanted this video to be made, here it is. Alright, so the big question, how much did this cost us? Well, Colorado 4x4 Rescue and Recovery operates entirely on donations and membership dues nationwide. All money they receive solely supports their rescues and recoveries as they have no paid positions. That's pretty awesome, and if you want to help support this awesome free recovery service, check out their website to learn more about them. It is a good all-terrain. I know I'm hard on all-terrains. I like my terrains. I don't know. I just, this really screwed up Sean's day, our day, all because of tire issues. Wasn't freaking Cherokee issue. It was tire issues that caused other issues. So, yeah. He's a fugitive or something. He didn't want to be out there. Oh yeah, and I think it's because he's not wearing a vest. 